Oh, you thought we'd take it easy on you on a Friday? Usher you into your weekend. Not with this slate of action, baby. Packed one on Up and Adams. Bills beat the Patriots. And I am happily out $1,000. Also, we welcome Austin Eckler to the show. He likes Raider Nation. He has warm and fuzzy feelings towards that rival fan base. I will ask him about that. And then Chiefs Bengals, former Chief Mitchell Schwartz, and the real star of the family, Brooke, his wife, will join the program. Beers with Sam Monson of PFF. We are getting PFF'd up on a busy Friday. Yes, who learned how to use a QR code? <laughs> Honestly, in August, I don't even know what that is. I don't know the right terminology for it. It was that little venmo -y thing, and there it is! Muscular Dystrophy Association. That was the, uh, on the cleats of one Naim Hines. Didn't get much action last night, but he got $1,000 from me. I learned how to use it. I'm doing it, as you guys can see right now. So easy to scan this code and make a big difference to support neuromuscular disease research and supporting families that live uh, with the illness and the struggles that are associated. So uh, I said I donate $1,000. Can I Apple Pay this sucker? Sucker, sucker, sucker! Oh, no. Am I not going to be able to do this? Oh, donate. <laughs> Oh no, hold on. Oh boy, it's well they say it's, it's supposed to be easy. Let me make sure it's easy. If, by the way, if you want to donate with me, go ahead and do this. And I saw, you know what I saw, which I wasn't surprised by. I really was not surprised by. Uh, there, Kay Adams got it. Donate donations. Um, I was not surprised by the fact that so many Buffalo Bills fans were like, you know what, I'll donate. Welcome to Bills Mafia. That's what we do here. And they've done that, as we've seen historically in the past, supporting guys like Andy Dalton in fun games uh, to make things fun. But doing that, let's see, your donation must be, well, yeah, donation must be a minimum of this. Contact details, donate. Ha, 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 ha. Double click. And there we go. I had a couple of DMs from people saying I'll donate $1,000, which is crazy and, and insane and amazing. And the support, the awareness, if you just retweet it, that's also awesome. So please go ahead and do that. And congrats to the Bills on the win. Uh, it was incredible. And even Jay-Z was impressed with the performance last night. They put away the Patriots up in Foxborough. 24-10. I mean, this must be so look at Josh's face. Looks like a five-year-old. He looks like all the five-year-olds that meet Josh Allen. That's what he looks like meeting Hove out there. And I've been talking about how the Bills need Jay. A to look a little J.A. again down the stretch if they're going to make a run through the gauntlet of the AFC. And maybe it did take Hove being in attendance to bring it out in him because we saw some vintage mwah, 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 chef's kiss Josh Allen moments last night like this. Ridiculous. Oh, oh, running, running. We've seen this before. What is he doing? Ah, tight rope. Unbelievable. Uh, down the sideline, threading the needle to Gabe Davis for the score. That wasn't the only. That's beautiful. That's mm. That's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. That wasn't the only uh, encouraging sign for the Bills in this one. Even with Josh Allen looking, um, he looked healthier, that's for sure. He looked a bit sharper in this one. They did something that I loved. <sighs> they stuck with the run game. Is this running? I don't know. <laughs> well, can I have my beer, please? I'm going to drink my whole beer today. Thank you. We're doing Polish beer. Happy Friday. Here's what the, the Bills did. And congrats to you. You got yeah, those, you're a big Bills Josh fan. Is back, this, is, this, is, this is like a 40. How big is this beer right here? Uh, did they run the ball 40 times? No, but just under, Brian. 37 times, maintaining possession for nearly 40 minutes. Hi, Brian. Uh, to the Patriots, 20. Just 20 for the Pats. And defensively, even without Von Miller, their big acquisition, their big $126 swing, the Bills front dominated the Patriots offensive line thanks to the guys who Von Miller helped elevate. The guy he took under his wings on his chicken farm and said, listen, Greg Russo, come here and boogie bash him. And Shaq Lawson, let me invest in you and let the bill, the bills invested in them a ton. And it was awesome to see the entire group step up without Miller. And then I, I, I guess we'll talk about the Patriots. The bubble team, the warm-up DJ at the Coachella Spotify wrapped up in Adam style. Mac Jones's frustration says it all. This is a guy, Stacey James has got him all media up. He doesn't react usually. Doesn't This doesn't usually happen. The Patriots couldn't protect up front. The play calling was sus. What is he saying there? Ooh, ear, ear, lots of beeps. I think he was talking to Matt Patricia. Why are you wearing a pencil in your ear and you have a laminated play sheet? You can't write on the laminated play sheet! 
Maybe that's what he was saying. You know what else was an issue? Drops, a huge issue. And outside, can, we, can Polish beer sponsor our program, please? This is delicious, it reminds me of being home. Uh, man, outside of, there was this nice, uh, Hamilton was texting me about Marcus Jones. Because we've talked about his versatility, and just you know, that was it. That was the only show in town, and he had you know uh, a couple things. Uh, they had a good thing happen there. Ramondre Stevenson had a couple of uh, Herculean runs, if you will, but r rhythmically it was without. It was a, it was a, you know, Kevin James and Hitch trying to keep it here, get in rhythm, make it happen. Stay, couldn't happen. They were all over the place, not in rhythm. Mac Jones was uh, speaking of how he's handling himself and his demeanor, pretty candid in addressing that frustration in game. Obviously, just kind of let my emotions get to me, but um, you know, we're kind of playing from behind, and what I said was about throwing it deeper in the short game. You know, I, I got to execute that part better, but it's the short game that we kept going to which was working, but I felt like we needed chunk plays. And, um, you know, I shouted that out to kind of get everyone going. And that's emotional. That's football. I'm passionate about this game. And um, obviously, you don't want to get your emotions, let, you know, get the best of you. But The O-line's an issue. That's clear. Another thing that's becoming clear is that as much as we love Matt Patricia, and we do, they could probably use an experienced, underline, bold, italicized, experienced play caller. This thing isn't working right now, and it might be too late to save the year for the Patriots. Patriots fans, though, very cool and understanding that they probably aren't going far this season. But the Pats, two games in the loss column back of a playoff spot. Tough schedule down the stretch. And you see the Bills, they're climbing up there at the top of those standings. Now, if the Bengals beat Kansas City and the Niners take down Miami this weekend, Buffalo moves back into the one seed where they belong in the AFC. Thanks to that win, that performance, that Josh allen -y vibe, the GOAT, uh, you know, being there in, in the stands and, and outside of the locker room and, of course, sticking to the run game and showing that they can do it without Von Miller. So congrats. But guess what, guys? That game was just the appetizer. Mm -hmm. That was the boneless chicken wings before what's going to happen on Sunday. Incredible weekend ahead. Oh, this is so good. Look at this. Chiefs, Bengals, Titans, Eagles, Jets, Vikings. Wow. Blockbuster matchup after big matchup after ginormous matchup. But I want to start with someone who's set to make a very important homecoming. This guy. This guy. Dude, that's, that's you. Did you hear what Tua just said? Anybody? It's a dangerous indicator that you don't have swag. He just told me, you heard guy, you heard those guys, they think I have swag. That's how you know. I would have had to layer, yep. layer that cool. one. Yep, cool, cool. Got it. Makes sense. He is such a smart. Just how he talks through stuff, like. Hi. So hey, you can, you can hang out by me well. Yeah, I'm gonna hang out by you though. Okay? I won't pace as much. The mic'd up have, uh, has been a gift when it comes to Mike McDaniel, and there's so much good stuff online if you haven't gotten into it yet, and it gives such insight into McDaniel and how he works, what makes him tick, how he operates, what he's like with his players, especially between he and Tua. It's really fun to see. Uh, and they sort of troll each other. They mess with each other. They talk about swag, not having swag, Georgia being better than Alabama. This is in the middle of a game. This is so cool to see. Are we appreciating this enough, how cool it is? and, and it, how effective it is to keep things loose on a sideline. I've never seen, and tell me if I'm wrong, hit me up at Hey K Adams or at Up and Adams Show. Have we ever seen any coach operate quite like this before? And maybe it's the mic'd upness, and maybe it's the fact that we're paying attention to it so much, but unbelievable, and, and it's working. I mean, we had Miami Sun Sentinel columnist Chris Perkins on the other day talking about what a difference McDaniel's made in bringing out the confidence of Tua, bringing out his personality, getting him back to looking at himself in the mirror and saying, I'm that guy. And if you look at the impact on the field, it is remarkable. Tua's put up an MVP caliber season so far. He's top five in every major passing category and leading the league in passer rating. But he and McDaniel are now facing a tough test. Like, they are going to face the Niners and that number one ranked defense. They got Bosa to deal with. Toronto Arms, it's unbelievable. The Niners have been 
Uh, very stifling, suffocating, and they've, by the way, been getting better every week. They're coming off a shutout over the Saints. It's hard to do in the National Football League. I don't care what the team is or who the quarterback is. And they have not allowed a single point. Not one. They're like, mm, maybe just one. Maybe we'll be nice because it's the holiday season. We'll gift wrap and put it on the Christmas tree. No, not one point in the second half in four straight games. And if that hasn't made things tough enough, check it. Look at how Kyle Shanahan has treated his former mentees. Since 2019, he has a combined 11-3 and against protégés Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur. That is some big bro stuff. He knocked LaFleur's Packers out of the playoffs twice, as we all know, along the way. So if Mike McDaniel and Tua can somehow solve the Rubik's Cube that is this number one ranked defense and take down the flat-billed visored one or flat-billed hat one uh, and Kyle Shanahan in the process, you're anyone out there is really going to tell me that Coach of the Year MVP and maybe even... Brian, cover your ears. He's a Bills fan. The one seed in the AFC won't all be on the table. And not far on the table. Not like, can you look twirl, make the lazy Susan twirl and let me land it? Can you please hand the... No, like right in front of them, easy to reach or not reach. It would be all coach of the years right there. Little side of MVP, the one seed to bring it all together. And by the way, I'm not the only one who's excited. Uh, we're extremely excited. I think we're uh, we're fired up, ready to go. It's a divisional game, like you said, a meaningful game in December, and uh, this is where you want to be. These are the games you want to play in. So we're all fired up and, and can't wait to get out there. Yeah, let's move on to this. This is Daniel Jones ahead of what uh, feels like is a playoff game this weekend with the Giants and the Washington Commanders. Take a look at this. The first of two meetings between these division rivals. Both teams desperately trying to cling to these wild card spots, as you see. I think this, without question, is the most meaningful game of Daniel Jones' career. Let me explain. He's in a contract year, of course. It'll be the first time that he'll play a game in the month of December that has real stakes in it. He's never done that before. The Giants, they're in the midst of a two-game slide. It's not going so hot. The schedule coming up, it's a nightmare. Oh my gosh, I got a ugh out of Brian. They have to play the Eagles twice. Then they got to go to Washington. Like I said, this is the first of two against the Commanders. And go to Minnesota. Woof. It really feels like a loss here could be, and I don't want it to be. I'm not sure I'm calling for it, Carton. I'm not calling for a boomer out there. Saquon Barkley, everybody. Victor Cruz is going to be mad about this. This is the makings of what could be the end of a magical ride for the Giants this season, unless they win. A win puts the Giants back into favorable position in this playoff race. And it is fitting, my friends, that the Giants will be wearing those beautiful legacy jerseys. Oh, are you kidding me? These gorgeous jerseys for this one. A win would also go a long way towards helping Daniel Jones carve out an identity, something that's sticky, something that really holds his legacy as a New York Giant. What are you? How will you be remembered? What's your future? And speaking of future, that would bring him one step closer to earning that contract extension and the chance to be Big Blue's franchise quarterback. And if all that wasn't enough, Odell, as I understand it, and I've heard from tw Twitter sources and other sources, he has been in town. In New York, the Giants trying to woo him to help bail out this injury-riddled receiving core. Uh, and I all, we, what's, what's, he's going to Buffalo today? That's what I hear? Yeah. Josh today. Oh, who, what? I think they're going to Josh Allen's house. And is that true? Oh sources. gosh, his sources say. Going, the Odell's going to Josh Allen's house with Von Miller. Okay, well that, but he is going to Buffalo. That's what we know, right? At, at some point today. So he's doing the, you know, the Odellapalooza on Monday in Dallas. Like he's, you know, hitting all the, all the stops before making a decision. So the Giants really, have the chance to pick up two wins this weekend. So that's something we'll, of course, be keeping an eye on with Odell, where he ends up, because he like he, he was last year. Don't tell me he can't do it again if he's healthy. Uh, okay, and so now we will take a break, because I do believe we have our guests on. I did so much talking, and I'm sick of it. One of my favorite NFL couples, Mitchell Swartz and the real star of the show, Brooke, next. <laughs> we love family here on the show. We've never had a couple yet on the program in like 60 episodes. So here we go, a true dynamic duo, a Super Bowl champion, four-time All-Pro, four-time All-Pro at right tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs. It's Mitchell Schwartz and here with the real star of the family, Brooke Schwartz, good morning. 
Good morning. morning. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Listen, I've, Brooke, I've, I've never met you, but I've heard a lot about you. I hear you are <laughs> you are uh, one of, I don't even know, like a, a great personality that I needed to meet, so I was happy to pull you on. And Mitchell, you're pretty cool, too. I am, but you're definitely <laughs> right that she is the star of the family, so. <laughs> person soon. Well, you're a first couple that we've had on the show, which is awesome. And Brooke, I had recently have had a lot of great former players, like Darren Sproles was on, Joe Hayden was on. Um, we have Eric Weddle on every week, and we talk about, you know, retirement, and we talk about wor these guys working their way back into their families, but the, the families have a routine, like the wives, the girlfriends, they, they, they have a life. They know where they're going <laughs> at 9, at 2, and these guys are like, well, what do I do, and how do I get back into this mix without pissing them off. So how is that going at the Schwartz household? <laughs> well, that has failed this morning because I'm he's driving me insane. I'm like, <laughs> can you just like go drive and sit in the parking lot and practice? Uh, but no, it is great to have him home, but today he's been driving me insane. <laughs> Why? Mitchell! There's a lot of general anxiety and uh, trying to make sure we got uh, all the lighting right and all the staging and all that. Uh, you know, I do my best, you know, Keep her on her toes. We appreciate it so much. Mitchell, What is, describe uh, life after football. It's a lot less stressful, that's for sure. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And Brooke will actually tell you, like, on the weekends, I'm kind of busier because I watch so much football. And I, have... I see less of him <laughs> now that he's retired. Yeah, so I, I try to watch as much as I can. I have a few things earlier in the week talking about football, so I try to, you know, watch what I can. But in general, I mean, I wake up, take the dogs out, get them breakfast, stretch play some golf like Good everything's business. everything's pretty easy and you know right now i'm not worried about blocking von miller or blocking one of these other guys yeah. uh, i just get to live life and we can you know figure out what to do every day that has to be fun tell us quickly what you're working on like i know that you're i know you watch tape on all of these games and you must be taking hours doing it what do you have in the beginning of the week so i do some uh commentary for the 33rd team and then awesome. I also do some local radio and then a few other things here and there, sometimes like Athletic Pod with Robert Mays and some little things when they pop up. So obviously very Chiefs oriented, uh, number one. But then, you know, I, I still love football. Like when I was playing, I try to watch as many games as possible. Like it is something I truly enjoy. So I just watch what I can. And, you know, it's fun to follow the storylines. I mean, Miami this year, you know, they've been a ton of fun to watch and to see the progression of the offense. So I just try to, you know, stay relatively on top of it. It's, yeah. it's easy as a former player to lose sight of things once you're not in like the normal football grind and you're not watching quite as much as it used to. And we'll get into that with, I mean, Bengals, Chiefs, what a game this week. But uh, Brooke, I think most people believe and maybe they're right, that the life of being married to an NFL player is always really glamorous. So first, I want to know the biggest perk. Mm -hmm. So I would say the biggest perk for most people is being able to see every game. But I myself am not a football fan. So it's just so funny. <laughs> my life has revolved around the sport that I'm not interested in. Um, but I would say just like meeting all the women and just having a sense of community and family um, and we we still feel very close with the team, so we're very fortunate. Do you think that that's why you two work? Because you're like, I don't care. Go watch. Is, is that what, is that like the key to a successful marriage in the NFL? I think that's definitely part of it. Like we love each other for each other. It's not about that I was a player, or that the status, or like these other things. And I think that's kind of the foundation of it. But I mean, to Brooke's point, like that's why we ended up staying in Kansas City long term because we love it here. It feels like family. It feels like a community, and it was just the right place for us. So we're enjoying each other, enjoying our time in the city, and you know, love living here. Brooke, a lot of people would say that that Kansas City is a great place. Why is it so special, and why did you guys like dig into that a little bit? It's a I have family there. I went to M Mizzou, which is a couple hours away. Why is Kansas City and that community so embracing of you two? Well, it. I feel like just the community, it's that small town feel with great like family values. And we do want to raise a family here. So it just really felt like the perfect fit. And we have this lovely couple who kind of adopted us when we moved here, Bruce and Susie. Um, <laughs> and they really like adopted us into their family. And we just feel very fortunate to have them and their friends. And just the Kansas City community has been really welcoming to us always. And you were at the game I saw last week. So, I mean, do you look at Mitchell and is he, is he getting that itch? Like when, like when everybody's, you know, doing their thing in that crowd. I can't imagine that you are not getting the itch while you're watching this game be played, Mitchell. He is in his lazy boy. Yeah. So I went to the game by myself to socialize. What? I, I went to tailgate. I went to a barbecue tailgate, ate some awesome food, and then I went home and watched the game at home. <laughs> so I stayed. I had some drinks. 
hung out with my friends, and then I met him at home, still in his Lazy Boy. So why don't you so want to go? No why don't you want to go to the game? Because it's just a better view at home. It's a better view. Uh, I'm not cool enough to have you know sweet privileges, so seats are a little bit tight for a six five, three hundred thirty pounder. <laughs> And, you know, I, I was watching or I was at the, the tailgate in the barbecue and I didn't get to watch the early games. And so if I had stayed there, watched the full game, came home, like I basically would have missed everything. Yeah. And there were some other good late afternoon games that I wanted to watch. So it kind of just made sense to go home, be comfortable, be able to take the dogs out. Like I know that <laughs> sounds dumb, but they are a big part of our Brooke, lives. you have his chores. He's like, this. Is, Eric Weddle is like that too. Eric Weddle is like, I have to make the avocado toast and I've got to make the peanut butter sandwiches. And then I've got, it's so funny to watch. Like, these NFL wives are like, no, 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 this is what you got to do. And I love seeing it. <laughs> Yes, he does all of the chores, I would say. Yeah, but wow. I enjoy it too. It's not like she's like, he, got me locked up until I do my chores. <laughs> a lot of people think that on Instagram. Um, but oh. no, he does all our laundry. He does cooking. Like, I do not know my way around a kitchen. So I'm like the social butterfly in the relationship. And he just like keeps our life together. Mitchell, what's your meal? <laughs> Give me like the best meal you can make. Ooh, well, in Kansas City, it's barbecue. Um, so that one I enjoy doing a lot. But I make a really good homemade pizza. Uh, yeah. Dough is a lot easier than people think. And that's something that it only takes four or five minutes in the oven once it's fully completed. Uh, and I'd say steak to round it out. Those are probably my top three. I'm very spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like you're living a lot. Brooke, your goals, if you ask me. Like, I'm taking, <laughs> I'm over here taking mental notes on how, how this has all worked out. But let's talk about this game this weekend. So, Mitchell, I don't know where you'll be. Lazy Boy Recliner. Your wife will be somewhere fabulous, doing something fabulous, looking beautiful like she did in that photo outside <laughs> Arrowhead, but it's Chiefs at Bengals this time. And as you and I both know, this team right here wears this helmet sometimes. They've given KC a lot of problems. They beat them twice last year. You watch so much tape. You're so prepared. You're going to be sitting on some big, big stage before we know it here. Tell me why you think Cincy's had their number. Well, I mean, last year they just they played better ball in that second half, especially in the AFC Championship game. Like they started to get that confidence and they knew like, yeah, we can do it. And they had just beaten them a few weeks before. So they kind of had that banked history of, yeah, we've already done it. We've already beaten them. And it's turned into a pretty fun rivalry. I mean, we've seen on Twitter and social media some of the back and forth between, you know, Chiefs defensive backs and Bengals wide receivers. And it's just there seems to be that animosity that you're looking for in one of these, like, really cool conference rivalries. Yeah. And obviously Mahomes and Burrow are going to be great for a while. But I think – the key with Cincinnati, I mean, offensively, they got the stars. They've got Burrow. They've got Chase. And defensively, that's kind of what holds them together. They're like a really good defense. And I don't know that, you know, DJ Reader is a household name. And, you know, Trey Hendrickson's a good defensive end. But he's not up there with, you know, Von Miller and Bosa and the guys you talk about. Yeah. But they're just, they're so good defensively. They play so well together. The, the scheme is really smart. They know what to take away from the offensive perspective. And they just play the Chiefs tough. And again, they have that confidence and they know like, hey, we beat these guys before. Yeah. I think that really matters. I mean, DJ Reader did his thing against Derrick Henry last week. They shut down him being able to do anything. I mean, that entire front did. Uh, okay, do you see, you know, are you, in, we don't know, I mean, we don't even know about Chase. We, or, or, whether or not he'll be out there. Did you see the whole Justin Reed thing blow up on Twitter? Did you see that at all? I did. That what did you funny. make of that? <laughs> I mean, what would you, is it, does that, I, I guess here's my question. So here's what happened, Brooke. This, ju this, this safety. Thank you, because I'm not yeah, aware of anything. The safety was not, world. he's not having, he's good. He's not having the best year. He's not like a top five guy. And he's talking to the media and he's basically for, you know, mixing other, he's talking about his opponent and he's like, what's his name? What's his name? And he's talking about the tight end, but everyone thinks he's talking about T Higgins, who's a bit, a great receiver, who's a bit unheralded and everyone's freaking out about how it adds bulletin board material if you will right Mitchell is that does that really happen is that you know what what should we take away from this because it blew up millions of views on Twitter yeah I think in this case it definitely becomes bulletin board material because it's more personalized especially like when you don't know the guy's name or when you say I'm gonna lock yeah. him up when you're talking about the tight end the receiver like that becomes a much more kind of personal uh, confrontation that you want to kind of defend your honor and you want to show the guy up on Sunday. So yeah, it was a bit out of character. I mean, especially you go back through Andy Reid's history, like his guys don't really antagonize uh, other players. You know, it happens every now and again, especially, yeah. you know, in the playoffs when you get pretty feisty, but it was, it was a surprise. And I think it'll again, add that layer of intrigue that like Ooh. these guys really don't seem to like each other. Is Andy, does Andy pull him aside and say something? Take me in that locker room because it's it's too big to not discuss, right? So does he say like, why did you say that? Or give him a reminder? How does Andy handle that? 
Yeah, I'm guessing one of the PR guys in the locker room probably goes up to him and is like, dude, what was that about? Oh. Um, but it seems like, you know, in this day and age, like guys don't really care as much. They're, they're okay kind of going on Twitter and saying what they need to and replying to people and uh, kind of talking. And I think that's yeah. what we appreciate in kind of this era of, you know, guys showing their personalities online. It's true. Mitchell, I was going to do this whole thing and we warned Brooke where I was going to pretend at this point. <laughs> I was literally, I have it like scripted out that I was going to say, the real reason you're on the show is that you're chosen for a Bravo, Real Housewives of NFL, but you're so, I was gonna do this whole thing where like the next six months of your life are gonna be documented, I was gonna announce, but you're so nice that I literally can't do it to you. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate that. You're so nice that I was, because I, I, I wanted the reaction of you looking at Brooke like, what did you do? But, I, but I'm, I'm not gonna do it because you're- I you feel are, like that would be so out of character for both of us that he would just know like right away. Oh. But. Oh, see, I'm, I'm glad I didn't do it. But I would like to put have some little fun uh, with with your your companionship, with your relationship, with all of that. So let's play a game called Know Your Spouse. Very clever and creative. So I think you guys have something to write on. I hope. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We're all fun. Here, I'm going to give you guys prompts, and then and then we'll we'll reveal. And you guys are sitting okay. right next to each other, so I don't know how this will work. But write down the biggest ick you have for each other. This is really popular right now. The thing that makes the, the biggest annoyance you have about each other. The biggest thing that makes you go, ugh. No cheating. Conrad Company is saying no cheating. And shout out to Jeff, who we have on the show often. Jeff Schwartz, we love you. All right, let's reveal. I'll do some dancing. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Loud chewing, is he right? <laughs> no, he has like a sensitivity to any sound. <laughs> Lazy boy 24 seven, is she right? That's her ick? Yeah, I, uh, so I like to recline on a, like comfortably on a reclining chair. So I got, we have a pretty cool setup in the basement. So I like to go down there Yeah. and Brooke likes to lay on like the chase side of the couch. And so we end up like not spending quite as much time together because I'll go downstairs on the lazy boy <laughs> and she'll stay up like by the fireplace with the dog on her couch. And so, uh, yeah, we don't tend to, you know, spend quite as much so quality we'll go, time together. We'll go to bed together at night. And I'm like, what'd you do today? <laughs> like, we need to like connect more in the house. Oh, well, we're, we're really working through some stuff. I'm, I'm on my Sally, just like Raphael right now. All right, wipe yeah. the boards. Um, let's do, let me do a funnier one. Your each other's celebrity crush. Write down each oh, other's celebrity right. crush. <laughs> no, don't, no talking, no cheating. Okay. I think this is not how this game actually works. We botched this, but that's okay. You guys are amazing. All right. Each other's celebrity crush. Mitchell Schwartz, Brooke Schwartz on here. They will be on season one of Bravo's Real Housewives <laughs> of the NFL. <laughs> let's, let's see. Idris yeah. Elba! Girl, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Scarlet Joe. Scar Joe. Shocking. Are you she's... saying that's wrong? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm obviously not going to say she's not an attractive person, but it's, I forget like what movie it was where Brooke's like, oh, you really like her, huh? Because I think I watched like uh, the one with her and Joaquin Phoenix and then there was some of the Avengers stuff and like, I yeah. just happened to watch a few movies in a row that she was in. Yeah. And it became one of those like little things that you just- You're watching into Lost movie. in Translation with her and Bill Murray on repeat. She's <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That's amazing. Okay, let's do one more. Um, no. One thing that you could, what, what that each other would take, that you think the other person would take on a deserted island, one item. Mm. <clears throat> Good music. Austin Eckler on the show. He's coming up. He'll talk about Raiders and the Chargers. We'll talk Bengals and uh, Chiefs as well a little bit later. What else we got? And Sam Munson will be on with PFF. This is what Mitch would take. <laughs> You're, oh, you would take the puppy? The puppy? Uh, right. And mine is Speaking of chargers, earring. this is what Brooke would take. <laughs> it's just constantly at 2% battery. So. Brooke, I'm, I'm the same way. Why are, Brooke, why are we like that? I'm the same way. I'm the same way. And I have thousands of unread emails, and I'm not. How many do you have? Where's your phone? Let's talk about right it. right here. OK. And it's <laughs> How many? You go first. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush you in this, sorry to say. Uh, 23,667. Oh, see, I'm doing great. I have 7,100. And how about, how about text messages? 
279. <laughs> 168. Oh, okay. There you go. Why are we like this? Missed calls. Um, Tiebreaker. Missed calls. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Well, I will not be clearing that out, but I am sad to say bye to you two. Enjoy the action this week. Hopefully the Chiefs can get it together. Uh, and good luck with everything you're doing in media. And obviously stop by whenever you want, Brooke. <laughs> okay. I will. We need to hang out soon. <laughs> yes, I'll be in Kansas City, I'm sure, at some point. Mitchell Schwartz, appreciate you. Congratulations on all the success and for what the future holds. Uh, and next time, I need those puppies and those dogs on the show, okay? Absolutely. All right, we've got more to come. Sam Munson. Sam Munson, do you have someone we can play the dating game with? Bring them on after this on the Up and Adam Show. Austin Eckler live on the show. A uh, question for you. Why just watch the Colts versus the Cowboys Sunday night football matchup this week when you can earn a share of a $10,000 in cash prizes when you enter the DirecTV Sunday night showdown this weekend on FanDuel? Take a look. All you got to do is enter the draft and draft your best five player lineup while staying under the salary cap. Fans who score the most points with their lineup combo win a share of that cash. All right, let's move on here. It's Friday. I'm looking forward to the weekend, of course, but now before we get a little PFF up, joining me now, the co host of the PFF NFL podcast PFFs lead NFL analyst Sam Munson how are you I'm good how are you mm. I'm in a drinking mood I'm in a drinking mood here how are you feeling good good I've had to go back to the the Guinness well so mm. um yeah Okay, we're, I'm Polish, you're Irish, we're Guinness, we're Zivietz, let's do this. Uh, let's get through some numbers. These are numbers that might make NFL fans say, whoa, that is PFF'd up. The playoff pictures are getting set, it is week 13. I mean, how about the slate of action, Sam? Great week, great week of games. I think it's the best week you've had so far. All right, let's do it. Here's the number. Tell me in my ear, guys. 122. I think 122 is the <laughs> It is the number of times that I've tried to log into my Spotify account over the past two days trying to figure out how to be cool and get that Spotify rap thing that everybody's posting, but I'm bad at passwords. And I lead, I lead the league in resetting passwords. That's just me. No. Passwords are a nightmare. 122 is the number of pass blocking snaps oh. between pressures that Tristan Wirfs has given up this season. Ugh. So that guy goes like two solid games on average between pressures that he gives up absolute freak injury last week with um, JOK like landing from six feet high on the back of his ankle maybe putting him out for a couple of weeks if he goes down that's a huge loss for Tampa Bay for a team that's already struggling on offense they are and I mean Bray's been getting sacked a ton right he's been sacked uh, uh, no not or he hasn't he hasn't really right 17 17 is not a lot only 17 that's the third fewest in the league so we need him we love Tristan Wirth. We need him out, out there, uh, and I love that him as a player, so that's great. Okay, 85 is the next number. PFF up, Sam Munson, what is 85? The percentage of Derrick Henry's rushing yards that have come after contact this season, which is by far the highest mark in the entire wow. NFL. He's the only running back above 80%. Usually a running back goes about as far as his blocking is going to get them and a little bit extra on top. Derrick Henry is getting 85% of his yards after he gets hit this season. Not against the Bengals, Sam. No. Well, even then, so Bengals, he had, what, 20-something yards, but 47 okay. after contact. I didn't like, you know what I didn't like? That Mitchell Schwartz came on and said that DJ Reader is in a household name. I love DJ Reader. Yeah, he's a star. Uh, he is a star. And the Eagles, like what you're saying, they've allowed the eighth most rushing yards in the league over the past five weeks. Derrick Henry, I think, is going to have plenty of opportunities to go off and rack up numbers for those of you who like PFF, for those of you who smartly download the PFF app, for those of you who use the numbers on the PFF app to, I don't know, have fun, win fantasy leagues, place bets, have a little fun over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Just saying. All right, the last one. Number one. <laughs> Number one is the number of times I've eaten an entire kiwi, including the skin that happened this week. Oh, dear. Um, oh dear. Number one is the ranking that the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line has been in PFF's offensive line rankings all season, every single week of the year, including the preseason rankings coming wow. into the year. The best offensive line in the game. They're great pass blocking. They're great run blocking. They're just a dominant unit. And the 363, that number literally sticks in my head and lives there. And I'm sure it does in the Packers run defense, lock room, whatever, too, as well. The 363 rushing yards the Eagles had against the Packers behind that offensive line is obscene. And I do believe we should just give a shout out to Lane Johnson because Lane Johnson is, they're releasing more music today. 
uh, those oh, e wow. the Eagles, and he's a big part of that. And he told me low key that today his song is being released. I don't know what that means. Is it him in full Mean Girls like Santa attire doing a dance with the boombox? I don't know, but I hope so, Sam. Yeah, how much is the auto tone thing used yeah, in that, or is that just pure natural? That's just how they are. It's a good question. Sam, have you seen Mean Girls? Uh, years ago, not lately. Sam, what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie, uh, A Bronx Tale with uh, uh, De Niro and some guy whose name I can't remember. That is, a, that is a Denzel Washington, I think. Right? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. no. It's, it's De Niro, uh, Chaz Palminteri, and some other guys. It's a good movie. I wonder how awkward. Not I can as good as beer, Sam. obviously. Sam, what if I just kept you on and just like just, just said nothing? What would what would what if how awkward would this get? You think we could is we just chicken game of TV chicken? Yeah. I think somebody on your end would cut it off before I would cut it off. They're literally yelling in my ear. We're tight on time. We're tight on time. Austin Eckler's <laughs> next. That's what they're saying. Yeah, but see, I'm not I'm ready saying. to move on. Uh, you're the best. Sam Munson, visit visit PFF. Get the app. Get the app before you do anything on your phone for these games. These awesome slate of action in week 13. Bye, Sam. Uh, Austin Eckler on the show. I said he's live. He's not live. He's alive and on the program, though, after this. And he's not afraid of the Raiders. He likes the Raiders fans. Weird. I also saw that you were on Truth or Dab. I was <laughs> laughing my ass off, Austin. I'm going to play a little Would You Rather here based off that. Would oh you rather go one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald or eat that chicken wing again? Would you rather tell Khalil Mack, walk up to him in the locker room and say, yo, man, you're washed up. Would you rather do that or eat that, <laughs> oh, okay. or eat that chicken wing it. again? We need to see you hosted it. I got to hop on a call with Austin Eckler this week. Big game, Chargers Raiders this week. Uh, we chatted and he took me into... Uh, a room in the facility and I said, where are you? And he showed me around the running backs room and I was like, well, I'm a little confused here, take a look. You're in the running back room and I find that very hilarious. Are you having an identity crisis, Austin? Because I'm looking at some of the numbers and you know, rushing yards, Josh Allen has more rushing yards than you do. When you look at catches, only Diggs, Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill have more catches than you. So what exactly are you? Are you in the wrong room? <laughs> You know, the NFL season is is very strange. Um, you have expectations, um, but that's just really paper, right? But paper doesn't play football. So we have to actually go out there and, and play the game. And so your role tends to change year after year. Whatever role you need me to play, if you need me to catch more balls, I can do it. If you need me to run, I'm going to do it. That's been my identity. Clearly yeah. you want to be a wide receiver. I mean, aren't, don't you piss off Keenan Allen and company? Aren't they like, bro, get in the other like, What are you doing? I just want to... I just want to make plays for my team in any way that I can. If you're going to throw it to me, hand it to me, it doesn't matter. That wasn't a no. I think you pissed Keenan Allen off. I do. I think Keenan's no, no, like... No, Keenan's not pissed. No, he's, get, he's getting his. He's out there scoring touchdowns. The only player with five-plus rushing and five-plus receiving touchdowns this season. What's interesting about you, there's a lot of uh, interesting things about you, Austin, mm. but you are really tough on yourself. Take yeah. me to the most frustrating part of the season so far for you. Take me to that moment. I mean, I'm still salty from this last game. Um, I, I feel like I really didn't play to the caliber and the standard that I wanted to play. And so I, I don't think it's really a moment. I think it's always, I'm always salty. Um, but I'm always out, out looking as well because I'm salty because I hold myself to the standard that's gotten me here. I'm salty during the season because I like I expect the most from myself. And you have to as a, as a competitor, because if you don't, then who else is going to push you? Nobody. So I don't know if there's really a point. It's just the entire season and really just my life where I'm just salty and just making sure that ah. I'm holding myself. Like I said, I'm trying to break myself. And off, rolling to his right, looking for Eckler. Has Eckler and he is into the Touchdown. pile on. Touchdown. 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 Chargers. Oh. I was able to do just enough to get us in there at the very end, but oh my goodness. Austin, do your coaches, are they like, give yourself, like, I can't, does Staley ever say like, lighten up? No, no. No. I, if you ever tell me to lighten up, I, like that's an insult to me. Like, what do you mean lighten up? You mean like, oh, go out there and don't be as hard on myself? Are you kidding me? Like, we're trying to win games, you know, we're trying to do it at a standard. Like, it's not just go out there, oh, lighten up, don't be as hard on yourself. That's like, I, when people tell me, hey, calm down, like, no, I shouldn't calm down. I gotta be better is what I gotta do. We don't have to be in that position if I play better throughout the rest of the game. And then your quarterback is somehow still called a social media quarterback. What is that? You know, I don't, I don't know. But here's the thing. Social media, social media is about, like, let's get a story. Let's, let's build some type of hype, right? And then if things don't 
come to fruition, it's like, all right, now let's say why it hasn't or why, right. you know. I Have you learned something new about him this year? Like a, uh, a new appreciation, a new level of respect? Because he's a tough kid. That's the expectation that you're probably going to have to play through some type of, you know, pain. I had Philip Rivers, you know, before him. So oh, I yeah. had, a, had a pretty good example of a guy that played through some stuff. The story of him playing on a torn ACL in a playoff game, you know, That's like... Great. They don't get much tougher than that guy. Um, so, you know, he's come in and filled that spot and has that same toughness, um, you know, playing with broken ribs, you know, learning the new playbook. It's like, yeah, you're one of the guys, man. Like, you're here. You're going to be here for a long time with that, man, that mentality and attitude. Austin, I miss Philip Rivers. A guy that's been playing for, you know, 17 years and how he understands the game and his passion for it. You know, uh, it's, it's really hard and almost impossible to replicate. So Raiders this week, right? But you have to play there too. So is it, how different is it from Oakland? I was thinking about, because you're going into Vegas, is the crowd the same? I mean, for me, it's just energy. I love the energy, you know? And then I got a bunch of fans out there anyway, too, because of fantasy football. So shout out to the fans. <laughs> Literally, I was at a shoot the other day and this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, I'm a Raiders fan, but I got you on fantasy, man. Let's no take way. a yeah, let's go. Like, that's awesome. I love that. I'm into it because there's so many other people that are into it and they show me respect and love and they're like shouting me out and being like, hey, you're on my team. Like, that's so special to me. That's why I'm into it. One of my favorite pictures is in the black hole, um, their old stadium. I scored a touchdown. It got called back, unfortunately, but I turn around and I'm like flexing and yelling. And then there's this shower of beer in the air. And then there's this other guy flipping me off. And they're just all yelling at me, pointing at the flag. It's it's an epic picture. Doesn't sound like they're asking for your autograph, babe. Yeah, not them there. Not them. That was a few years back. It's not just athletes that you have on Eckler's Edge. I want to know how the show's going. I know that you had Dwight from The Office on. So yeah. it's just, it, you're crushing it right now. My team this year called illegal use of hands okay okay very nice yeah so we we love to you know pull from from different parts of the world you know we mainly stay in the athletes we had jonathan taylor on before then so uh, yeah and so we're bringing on guys that you know have have had success in the fantasy football scene as far as being a player um and then we bring on people that are um you know we have the miz who's a wwe superstar right and He's, he loves fantasy football he loves He's fantasy crazy. football yeah so we'll bring on anyone that's you know has some type of connection to fantasy football then we'll dive into what they have going in on in their life how their team's doing talk about life talk about ball talk about whatever really because i don't want it just to be one dimensional i kind of want to get some some you know different sides of people i also saw that you were on truth or dab i was i was literally i don't know you guys were crying i was I was <laughs> laughing my ass off, Austin. It was so freaking funny because y'all are babies. Y'all are babies about this stuff. What do you mean, babies? Have you tried it? Yes, I can eat spice. It's the only thing. Literally nothing else can I say that I can do, but I can eat. Ask Sean. Ask Sean. We're both from Chicago. I can, I can eat spicy food. Well, good for you. That you, you, were, you were, I can't even, it was like, I thought it was CGI'd on you, this web. No. I couldn't, I wasn't even comprehending the conversation because I was so focused on my face burning and making sure that I was okay. Because there was so much sweat dripping off of my head. I'm like, what is happening to my body? Um, so yeah, that was a, a experience I will never ever go through again. So I'm gonna play a little Would You Rather here based off that. Would oh you rather go one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald or eat that Let's, chicken wing again? I'll eat the chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> you just said you'll never do it again, but you'll do it instead of having oh, Okay, you're right, you're right. I have a line. I got a price. Everyone's got a price. <laughs> <laughs> okay, would you rather tell Khalil Mack, walk up to him in the locker room and say, yo, man, you're washed up. Would you rather do that? <laughs> oh, okay. Or eat that chicken you host wing again? <laughs> we need to see you hosted it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Would you rather go over the middle against... Oh, my Brady? goodness. Okay, we got, we got to move on from the would you rather... <laughs> Or eat the chicken wing again. <laughs> I'll go over the middle. That one doesn't scare me. <laughs> You're not scared of Ray Lewis? Oh, you said Ray Lewis? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Oh, yeah. I'll still go across the middle, yeah. You're, oh, Ray Lewis. If it, it doesn't matter who's there. I'm going across the middle. I'll do it all the time. <laughs> Last but not least, make the perfect. You're a big smoothie guy. Take me through yeah. the perfect smoothie recipe. Go. <laughs> I hate cooking. And so during the off season, my breakfast every single morning, every single morning is... Uh, a cup of oats, two raw eggs, some strawberries, and I'll put some almond milk or whole milk in there, depending on if I'm trying to bulk or You not. blend it out now? Yeah, blend it out. You blend raw eggs and you eat it, like Gaston and Beauty Oh, you drink it, because it's blend. Yes. <laughs>
Okay, Raiders this weekend, and then you guys are on the bubble with the Patriots. You feeling good about this? Give 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 Chargers fans uh, some hope here. Look, we take it one at a time. We take it one at a time because you've seen our games. They're awesome. outrageous. Our games are outrageous. I can't look past trying to beat the Raiders because we got these games. We're up. We're down. We're coming back. They're coming back, and so trying to not have a heart attack every single Sunday. So it's really true. Y'all need can, yeah. can y'all relax on that for like one minute? Yeah, yeah that's I'm, we're trying. We're trying. Trust me. All right, kid. Good luck this week against <laughs> the. Right, the Raiders, who you are not scared of their fans, which I think is a, I think that's a challenge for Raider well, okay. fans out there. Like, give it, Actually, give, do not be so nice to Austin Eckler. What are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll shout out to Raider fans. Austin, you're the best. Good luck. And we want to see Thank lots you. of air guitars on. I know, time. I know. Oh, that's another thing I've been doing. I've been starting a band with my lady. We got a two-man crew, so we have a single coming out You soon. and your girl have a band? Yeah, she plays the drums. I've been learning the guitar, so. Are you lying right now? Seriously? No, I'm not lying. You can check out some of our stuff on Instagram as well. If you had to add one more person, hold on, Jamal, calm down. If you I, mean, I gotta to go eat lunch. Sheesh. Okay, bye. Okay, go eat your okay, okay, see you. Smoothie, we'll talk to you later. DF, yes. Here's my hookups for you, Justin Herbert uh, at the Raider, second most generous to quarterbacks in the points category. He's been heating up with Keenan Allen back. Play him. How about Michael Hasty at Detroit? If ETN cannot go, get him in there. He had 95 total yards and a touchdown after ETN got hurt last week. Keenan Allen, the, we love a stack. We love Herbert. We love Allen. Allen's mad, of course. And Christian Watson, I don't know what we're doing here. Christian Watson uh, at Chicago. Pat Fryermuth at Atlanta is what we're looking at for the rest of that. Uh, and, you know, Pat Fryermuth's been a big target from Pickett. I don't quite know what happened, but I got some cane makers for you. Christian McCaffrey against the Dolphins. No Elijah Mitchell this week to poach touches. The Dolphins have allowed five touchdowns to running backs for the last four weeks. Nick Chubb has scored five touchdowns, bam, 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 in the last five games. I think that's great, and he's up against the Texans. And then my last one's going to be Christian Kirk. He has scored a career-high seven touchdowns already this season, and I think he's Trevor Lawrence's go-to guy, averaging just under 10 targets a game. Get him in there. Pow, pow, pow.